Hello, I'm Jeff Wong, and I'm the Global Chief Innovation Officer at EY. Uh, we are here at the Silicon Foundry in San Francisco at our Global Innovation Community event for EY, and I have with me Sophie Hackford. Sophie is a futurist. Uh, she's a CEO co-founder of 1715 Labs, which is a data and artificial intelligence company. And most importantly, she's my friend and a great friend to EY. And what we'd like to talk today with you, Sophie, is about what's the world look like in 10 years? I mean, that's everything you think about, right? Yeah, where's the world it, going? Yeah. What are different technologies? How are yeah. they changing the world? So where's the world going to, what's the world going to look like in 10 years? And one of the most interesting things you're, you've been talking about recently is about space industry and how that's changing what, the way yeah, the yeah. world looks. Tell me a little bit about space sure. industry and tell us about how it might change the world over yeah. the next 10 years. I'm super excited about the private space industry and space commerce in particular. Yes, there's a lot of scientific uh, endeavors that are being turbocharged by technology, but for me, it's the idea that there is going to be an industry, an economy in space uh, you know, off Earth, uh, which is a sort of mind-blowing concept yeah. um, in a way. But for me, the interesting thing is what's that relationship with us? How is that going to impact innovation here on Earth, but also the way that uh, we develop our species off this planet. And I'm interested particularly in things like manufacturing in space. There are some fantastic companies made in space is one of them, but there are plenty of others uh, who are creating these sort of factories that can uh, create and build satellites in space or antennae, things that you can't send up in a rocket. And I think you know, once we start building things off Earth, that really is the very beginning of the sort of space uh, economy, and I think that'll happen what, far before 2030. I think probably in the next few years or so. Well, whenever I think of space, I just think of the big satellites that we put up mm. there and telecommunications networks. Yeah. So now you're talking about actually building things in Absolutely. space. Absolutely. Yeah. So we can probably build a bunch of things that are hard to build here. Absolutely, well, and also you know things like rockets. You know, when we if if we ever get to Mars, which obviously a lot of people are quite focused on at the moment, entrepreneurs. Um, you know, it'd, it'd be great if we can build housing, we can build uh, you know, transportation devices, we can build rockets. Um, there are people who are 3D printing uh, rockets now, um, incredible companies who are thinking about how we can do that using Martian or extraterrestrial materials. So Very what's, exciting. What's amazing to me, Sophie, is here we are talking about in 10 years we're going to have the space industry, mm. right? Whether it is the satellites or being able to build things in space, actually in yeah. space. And 10 years ago, we really weren't talking about the space industry at Absolutely. all. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, how does you how do you think about that pace, yeah. that that speed, that this industry yeah. that never existed, that didn't exactly, and exist it isn't. I think just is a. I mean, speed's an incredible, important part of it, but it's also this idea that whole new industries can appear you know, as if from nothing, right? You know, the, the 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 province of space was something that belonged to the military industrial complex. It was NASA, it was the European Space Agency, all these you know, the Chinese, the Russians, all of these yeah. sort of national bodies. Now we have entrepreneurs um, who are you know, who have created a multi, God knows how much, how many dollars uh, uh, industry now that will, I think, only, it's only at the very, very beginnings, and I'm super excited about that. So I want to change gears a little bit when we talk about 10 years from now, mm -hmm. because when we talk about space, and it's still, it's remarkable what you're saying, but I can at least picture it, yeah. because there's rockets, yeah. and there's things that, you know, go <laughs> there's up, kit. and there's, kit. There's, <laughs> there's a physical, tangible yeah. thing, and we've, I, you know, I remember as a kid watching the space launches, yeah, so I, I have some sense of what yeah. that is. But something else you talk about that I think is just fascinating, mm -hmm. and it's probably a little more uh, philosophical for our audience out there, is digital immortality. Oh, yes. So yeah. can you talk a little bit about digital immortality? Yeah. And where you maybe even see aspects of it today yeah. and how it's going to develop, over, again, sure. over the next 10 years? Well, I think we all know that our data is being captured by lots of different companies, yeah. governments, you name it, right? And that's something that we've opted into, whether we perhaps knew it or not, um, over the last, I don't know, 10 yeah. uh, years or so. And I, I think we, again, also know that that's going to get deeper and deeper um, as we collect more information from our wearables and our searches and our cars and our bank accounts and our thermostats and wherever it might be. And, of course, all of that data is able to be sort of processed um, you know, by a sort of uh, smart uh, uh, set of robots um, to actually create a version of us, you know, an algorithmic model of us that I think we'll send out into the, the world, uh, digitally or otherwise, to transact on our behalf, to um, find healthcare solutions on our behalf, to help us with our finances, to essentially represent us in the digital sphere. And I think the, the immortality piece becomes very interesting, of course, because once uh, this model resembles us, 
from a data perspective, there are questions about then whether it could live on beyond our natural lifespan. Could our children, our children's children, carry on talking to us long after we've uh, shuffled off the mortal coil? I think that's a really interesting philosophical question, um, uh, which seems rather amusing, but at the same time is actually incredibly, um, uh, I think, Possible, and if we talk about so ten years from now, um, you know the, social, the big social media platforms will be populated by lots of dead people, um, and that very and quite a lot of data about those dead people. <laughs> and the question is, can we access that as a resource? Is there a lot of intelligence in there that, as an economy or as a country or as a uh, community, we could tap into and use? Again, trippy but really interesting questions. Well, it's fascinating because you're right. There's aspects of this that exist today, whether it's the social networks that have sort of a timeline of history for yeah. a lot of people and who are mostly here still, but yep. as sort of the, the social, exactly. we get older, the social yep. networks get a little longer, yep. uh, have a little more longevity to yep. it, then they'll have this existing record. Yep. And retailers have a sense of what yep. you would buy and before, movie companies have a sense of do. what you'll yeah. watch before you do. So <laughs> yeah. to your point, there's these aspects of digital immortality that already exists exactly. today. Yeah. So just really fascinating. Yeah. And I love this concept. I think it's Pedro Dominguez that talks about it. This idea that we were, we're basically enabling this avatar, this, version, this digital version of us, to live out hundreds of versions of our life so we can optimize our best human life. Because for me, that's the promise of technology. It actually enables me to be the most human possible. Right? And all the boring yes. Yes. things that I don't like doing or I'm just not terribly good at doing are actually done by my digital version. And I think there's something quite compelling about that. Well, Sophie, thank you. I, you know, I'm Jeff Wong here with Sophie Hackford. Thank you so much for My your pleasure. time Thanks today. Thanks for inviting me. This was thank you. a lot of fun. Great.